Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and today I am excited because this is a big day. And with me, I've got my boss. This is Paul Letley. For those of you that don't know, he is the head of R&D for Pitsco. And as you know, we have created uh, for several years uh, quality hardware that you can use to create robots from both the Tetrix Max system and the Tetrix Prime system. But today we're really ready to take that next step into the robotics realm. So Paul's here today to help me introduce that. So Paul, what have we got today? Well, yes, so we're real excited today to show you one of the latest and greatest things that we're bringing to the Tetrix Max platform, and that is our Tetrix Prism robotics controller. As Tim mentioned, up to now, we've mainly uh, dealt in the uh, remote control robot world, but with the introduction of Prism, students and teachers will now be able to, to code in their classroom using the Arduino IDE software and the Prism controller. So now we are truly moving into programmable robotics in the classroom, right? Yes, that's exactly right. We've packed the Tetrix Prism robotics controller with lots of features and benefits, which we'll share with you. Okay, Paul, so you said you're going to go through the features, and let's start with, because I heard you mention that it had an Arduino architecture. What did you really mean by that? Walk me through that. So, yeah, that's exactly right. So, the, the Prism Robotics Controller is based on the Arduino architecture, meaning it has an Arduino processor uh, embedded in it. Now, when, when most people uh, hear the word Arduino or think of Arduino, uh, they think of, a, of an Arduino board, which is what I have here. I have an Arduino Uno board. So it's very small in architecture but it just has socket pins on it where I would connect all of my motors and servos and things like that, typical items I might use in a, in a, in a ro in building a robot. And so Prism has that same functionality of the Arduino IDE or architecture built into it, but also is fully integrated motor controller. Got and an all-in-one unit. It's exactly cool. right. So and so we can go around and explain some yeah. of those features. Yeah. So just point so, them out what we what we've got there. Kind right. of walk through them. Sure. So let's start with the USB port. Turn it around here. And so it has a USB port on the back, and that is how you download your programs. Connectivity to your computer, right? Right from okay. your computer, which by the way um, can work with a Windows machine, a Macintosh machine, or a Linux machine. So uh, all three of those platforms are supported by the Arduino software. Awesome. So uh, let's turn it around here and look at the front. These white connectors we have here are actually sensor port connections. Yes. How many and how, what kind do we have? We've packed a lot of port connections onto Prism. Uh, we have a row on the left-hand side, which includes three analog ports and one I2C port. Now, an I2C port is just a special sort of uh, communication protocol. Okay. Some people call it I squared C or I two C. Yeah, either one of them is correct. Some specialized sensors use the I two C protocol, and that's what this port is used for. The three analog ports down here are used for uh, used for connection of sensors that output an analog signal. Okay. The ones over here to the right or toward the center are 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 our digital ports, and those are where you would connect digital sensors. So eight sensor ports all, to all eight together, Eight sensor right? ports all together. Now I need to mention too, this top one on the digital side is can also be used as a standard serial port. There are some uh, sensors or uh, wireless Bluetooth modules, things like that, that require a serial connection and so Prism will accommodate that. That's awesome. Yes. And as far as motor control, uh, we've packed a lot into Prism. If we move over here to the center, you can see we have eight slots here for servo motors. Now, six of them okay. are for standard servo motors. Okay. The other two are for a specialized servo motor called the continuous rotation servo. And that's typically more than what you would find on, on a lot of other controllers, right? Typically, you, you might max out at six, six servo yes. Uh, outputs? Yes, that's correct. Awesome. Yes. And moving on from there, we can move down to the bottom of the red, black, red, black connector. And that, those are our DC motor ports. So on this side, we have motor port number one. And on this side, we have motor port number two. Now, each one of those motor ports has an equivalent encoder input. Now, that's very important because when you're designing robots that need to travel along the surface very accurately, you really need to have the ability to plug a motor encoder into the PRISM controller, or any controller for that matter, so that we can see where we, all, where we are at all times. Moving over to this side, this is where we connect our Tetrix battery pack. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's actually a, to a top and a bottom connection port. Now there's a reason for that. When you plug your Tetrix battery pack into PRISM, you use one of the available ports. You can either plug it into the bottom row or mm -hmm. the top row. Now, the 
row that you have not used serves as a power extension. So if we're wanting to power other devices, other additional motor controllers on our robot, we can do that very easily by not adding another battery. You simply just plug the outlet into the inlet and so on and so forth. So now you're talking about daisy chaining and expandability, right? That's exactly right. right. And for daisy chaining and expandability, I need to turn it back around and show you this center port here on the back side. This is our motor expansion port. Now what this port is, you, you mentioned possibly needing more motors, needing mm -hmm. more servos, and that's where the expansion port comes into play. The expansion port is used for just that. The expansion port is used for adding additional DC motor controllers and additional server motor controllers onto Prism Controller. Now, these additional DC motor controllers and servo motor controllers are something that we are still working on in development and will be available after the first of the year. Awesome. So we've got basically, if I want to just kind of summarize and make sure I've got everything right, we've got this awesome standalone controller. It's That's got right. a really rich feature set. We've got sensors, eight sensors total, a couple of specialty sensor ports. We've got DC motors in addition mm -hmm. to servo motors, so got the best of both worlds there, lots of them, and then also the ability to um, connect power in and yep. power out through expansion, mm -hmm. and then a standard USB connector. Talk to me a little bit, just briefly, mm -hmm. This is uh, like an awesome look with that clear case. How did that come about and why do we call it PRISM? Well, actually, the case, the top of this case here is made from clear polycarbonate. And so it's very tough. Polycarbonate awesome. is actually used in some bulletproof devices, like okay. bulletproof glass, things like that. So this com this controller will stand up to a it's lot not bulletproof. Of abuse. Let's stop right there. We don't want to make yeah. sure we don't want anybody shooting bullets at it. But yeah. it's made of the same material, so that's good. And actually, Tim, the clear case actually was an idea uh, from a teacher that okay. we had actually had preview prism, and uh, this teacher thought that. How neat or cool would it be for us to make the top of this clear so you can see all of the inner workings inside of PRISM? Because there are different LED, which are light emitting diodes, little, little colored lights inside of PRISM that really indicate what's going on. And you can use those LEDs to indicate uh, the status of maybe sensors, or there's a row of them in front of the motor controller, or the, I'm sorry, the motor ports here that tell you what direction your motor is spinning. There is also data lights back here that um, signal when USB data is either coming to PRISM or coming from PRISM, things like that. So being able to see inside of it, I think will we'll, we'll spark some interest from students and, uh, and maybe, maybe um, um, let them understand the electronics inside of PRISM a little bit better. And uh, that kind of led itself into the creation of the name PRISM, right? Actually, PRISM, yes. Clear lens, and so actually the name PRISM was inspired by the idea of the clear top on the, on the controller itself. So, Paul, you talked about all this rich features that the, board, uh, the PRISM controller brain mm -hmm. has. So, kind of explain to me, what does that give us in the way of benefits to go along with that? We mentioned some things about expandability and um, the robustness and things like that. But what else does this give us uh, with all those features? Well, I think there's a lot of benefits, Tim. Uh, one is accessibility. Um, okay. We mentioned uh, the fact that PRISM is based on the Arduino architecture, meaning that uh, the benefit of that is the software is free. Software is available online as a free download. Um, there's also, as you know, a huge open source community of users um, that support the, Ar the Arduino platform. And so that is a tremendous benefit for teachers and students who are wanting to learn more about coding with PRISM. Also, um, we need to talk about the programmer's guide. That's awesome. included this big PRISM. honking book that I got right here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's 164 pages around in there. And uh, it'll guide you through learning about uh, how to code with PRISM from a for very si simple simply up to uh, uh, very complex. I say very complex, but what I would call, you know, fairly complex. Okay. There's also a lot of information in here about the Arduino function library, which is available at tetrixrobotics.com backslash prism downloads. And that is a specialized set of functions right. that we've developed for prism that plugs into the Arduino software that allows you to use the feature set of PRISM very, very easy. You did a lot of work on that from a yes. software side to make yes. sure that it was easy as possible to use. I mean, I, we're, we've thrown that out there several times, easy to use, but um, let's talk about it a little bit more. I mean, what do you think, if you had to just say why this was easy to use, how would you uh, sum that up as far as what makes it easy to use? In addition to everything else we've talked about, 
Well, aside from the uh, software benefits we talked about, um, the PRISM itself has, um, we think it's designed to be very easy to use. It has uh, very clearly marked connectors. Um, everything is truly plug and play, so there's no wiring to be done. Uh, the connectors um, um, are uh, prevent uh, students from possibly plugging things in backwards or in the wrong place mm -hmm. and things like that, and so very classroom friendly. And, and before I go too far, because I don't want to forget, when we, we talked about compatibility, did we mention Grow, the sensors? Um, that's a good point. So the sensor ports that we had talked about are designed to be compatible with a sensor family called, called Grow sensors. Okay. The Grove sensor family, uh, they're available online at the Grove website. And uh, last I counted, I think there was 60 plus different Ooh, types of sensors. That's a lot of sensors. The Grove banks. And so the white connectors you see here are uh, all compatible with those sensors. We have two that's included in the Tetrix kit. It's a line following or a line finder sensor and an ultrasonic dis distance range finder sensor. But um, as, as noted, with compatibility with the rest of Grove sensors, that allows for a lot of expandability. It does. So I'm excited to see this on a robot and see it working. I think you brought one, right? We do. We have one. So let's, uh, let's move some of this stuff out of the way so we've got a little working space here and let's show the folks, right? Let's do it. Cool. I've got the robot over here on my side. Now, just a quick word about this robot, Paul. We've, we've got uh, a robot that's primarily based on a max building foundation with the frame on the bottom. It's including a 12-volt uh, battery system, mm -hmm. so it's going to work fine with Prism. I've got two of the DC motors with encoders, mm -hmm. but also I've got some structural elements sprinkling in there with yes. the Prime, but mm -hmm. most importantly, I've got the Prism on board, right? That's correct. Okay, so kind of walk me through real quickly What's this robot going to do? We've got a limited space, so what can we what can we show here? Yeah, so we've just uh, done a little demo program here for this robot, and uh, when we start this robot moving, the robot will grasp our basketball, and then navigate forward to the goal to the basket here, and it'll do so by using the DC motors with the built-in encoders, so we can tell it to go forward a very very accurate distance, and we know this distance. Okay stop right above the basketball goal, release the basketball into the goal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give us power. Power switch on, yeah. I'm going to wait for a uh, green light, which I have. Green light means go. That okay. means press the green so start button. So I am going to press my green start button. Mm -hmm. Up, grab the ball. Got the ball. It's going up. Raising up. Pausing. It's going to come down. And now I've got a solid red light. That means it's ready to go score the basket. Okay. I'm gonna press the green button. There she goes. Awesome. Nothing but net. So there you go. We've got a, a perfect uh, demonstration of a working prism on a bot. We didn't have a lot of room, so we couldn't make it do a lot of real fancy stuff, but uh, we wanted to be able to show that we have a working, working prism on a max and prime combination, keeping in mind that we've got the 12 volt battery that's allowing this prism to work with DC motors, encoders, servos, all the structural elements, right? That's right. And as Tim mentioned, this was a very simple demonstration, but we're real excited to see what your students can do with their own Tetrix Prism. This should take us to that next level, right? Absolutely. Awesome. So we want to remember, make sure everybody knows they're going to go to tetrixrobotics.com, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. They'll find all the information they need about Prism. Mm -hmm. um, things to download. Lots of resources. All kinds of things yeah. there. And then, like we always say, right? Mm -hmm. Build some robots out there, have fun, and come back and see us.